So diet without dieting. This is very passionate topic to me as the nephrologist. I am always asked about um, what is going on? What am I supposed to eat? What am I supposed to not eat? And it's become so confusing. There's so many advice, um, so many diets. And I first, I want to start with like, what does the diet mean? What does the word diet uh, even mean? Um, so if you actually open the dictionary, the first definition of the diet is just food and drink regularly provided or consumed. Regular is the key word to me is a regular provided and consumed. And if we keep going on, then it's just habitual nourishment. And then it's the kind of the amount of food prescribed for person or animal for special reason. And then the very last definition, very last definition. This is when we come to eating and drinking sparingly so as to reduce one's weight. So, and that's what we nowadays, and most of the people understand diet is actually eliminating some products. And if you look at our society, only across the United States, $42 billion spend yearly on the weight loss, $42 million, billion, not million, billion dollars. This is incredible. And then if you, I just Googled yesterday diet, and I had a list of 50 most popular diets, 50. How can anybody can wrap their head around it? And when you look at all of the diets, actually every single diet work. The only problem is they only work for a very short period of time. And uh, every people, every person can lose the weight on any diet. But the problem is as soon as you stop dieting, you actually regain more weight than you had before. Uh, so how do you navigate through all of this world of diets and why diet, all of them work, but they, they don't work. So average American actually gain five pounds per year after being in the diet, not losing weight, but actually gaining weight after being on a diet. Um, and if we go even to the Bible, um, then even in the Bible, it says it's not working. When you tell your brain that you cannot have one or another product, your brain automatically sets up on a mission that this is the only thing I want. And this apple is for this reason, the gods say you can eat from every tree except this one. And what did Eve did and then Adam did, they specifically ate from this tree. It's actually in our um, brain, we create a circle. The moment we say, I'm going to go on the Atkins diet, I'm only going to eat meat. I'm not going to eat bread. I'm not going to eat sweets. This is what your brain desires the most. The moment you say, oh, I'm going to be on keto, no carbs. The moment you say, oh, I'm going to eliminate this. This is what your brain wants. And it's create this loop when it creates desire, then obsession. First, you just, oh, I want this candy. I want this like cream, but I'm on a diet. I can't have it. And then it's obsession. I actually, when I went vegan for three years, I had a dreams about me eating meat. And I would wake up in the middle of the night and like, oh my God, what did I just do? I ate meat. And I'm like, oh, thanks God. It was a dream. I actually didn't do it. And then at some point, uh, when your hormones like serotonin is depleted, you give up into your obsession and you go into consumption. And then the next step is guilt. You feel guilty. I go and exercise for hours in the gym. Some people feel guilty and they are, oh, like I already off the track. So let me just finish the day and I'm just going to eat everything that I can find, everything I can lay my eye on and let me drive to the, um, uh, Don the Dunkin' Donuts and, you know, get this too, since I'm already off the diet. So let's just finish the day. And that's how every single diet fail. Desire, obsession, obsession, compulsion, and then guilt. And I want to break the cycle of 
you ever going on a diet again. There is some rules, there is some basic physiological needs that needs to be fulfilled. You will feel hungry unless you fulfill these needs. And here, here's the needs. And like, let's quickly look like water. We have water here. It's on average one ounces per kilogram of weight. So easy calculation, you divide your weight in pounds by half, and this is how many ounces you need. It's approximation. And I actually do have a very cool video on a um, YouTube channel. So if you wanna check out more about how much water should you drink. And then like you have all of these rules, you have to have one gram per kilogram of protein per day. You have to have one gram per kilogram per day of fats. You have to have these carbs and the fibers and then vitamin D. And by the way, cool fact about vitamin D, if you spend 20 minutes outside in a sunny day with just 20% of skin exposed, that means you were in t-shirt and shorts. You have your 20, you have your 800 units of vitamin D, so you don't need the supplements. And by the way, we used to think that vitamin D comes in two forms, D2 and D3. And so we thought that D3 is actually active form that your kidney convert, like you consume D2 with the food or you get it from the sun. And then your kidney convert D2 to D3. And then D3 is actually what we need. So most of the supplementation that you buy in the store will be D3. But recent studies show that D2 is actually as important. If D3 is responsible for the calcium and bones and magne like magnesium in the bones and metabolism of all of your skeleton and osteoporosis, D2 is actually responsible for cognitive function, for depression. So it's not just like, it's not gonna work as well with supplementation as it actually will work with the food. And I'm sure we don't even know, we just scratched the surface of the iceberg. So we don't know what we need and how much we need. Look at the omega-3. We need, women need about 1.2 grams per day. Men needs about two grams per day. And then it's actually that we know of certain minerals and vitamins that body can produce itself. So it can only be consumed with the food. And so all of this like eight blocks, this is what you need to get from the food. Otherwise you're gonna feel hungry. And how does it work? So let's say um, you didn't eat enough protein. So if you weigh 150 pounds, this is approximately very crude calculation, 70 kilos. So you need 70 grams of protein per day. So if you did not eat your 70 grams of protein per day, your body will send you a signal, I'm hungry. But if you like me, who mother, the doctor, I'm busy, um, I'm always in a rush. I don't actually have time to sit down and think, okay, what is my body telling me? What do I actually need? I'm just gonna grab something and something can be bagel. And bagel will have two grams of protein on about 300 calories. And let's say I still need 20. So I actually can eat 10 bagels before I fulfill my protein need. 10 bagels, I would consume almost 3,000 calories to fulfill the need of 20 grams of protein. And this is where this beautiful philosophy of the rule of plate come in place because it balances your plate and you stop thinking, oh, like, do I need this? Do I need this? Do I need this? This is great general guidelines. And of course, it's a general guideline. So you adjust it to yourself. I do recommend everybody who's trying to lose or gain weight, whose BMI is either above 25 or below 18, once in a lifetime for like a one week, calculate all of your um, protein and fats and carbs. So you just can trick or like tweak your plate a little bit, but only do it for a week. And I use calculators, like you have multiple apps on like your devices, you can download, lose it, any tracker and just calculate your calories for a week just to see what adjustment do you need. But let's move to this rule of plate. 
So rule of plate is very simple, very visual. And when you serve yourself a plate, you divide visually this plate into first and a half. And then the one half of the plate is more for vegetables and less for fruits. And then the other half of the plate equally divided between protein and grains. And I actually did a little bit, like do a little bit modification for my, especially diabetic patients. So vegetables and grains, so starchy vegetables like potatoes, they would actually go into the grains. So potato can substitute this grain portion. So let's look, this is theory, let's look, what is it like practically look? So on a left side here, half of the plate is all of the vegetables and fruits. And then your protein can be plant-based or animal-based. And for the kidneys, uh, animal-based protein is not the best thing. So I do recommend at least 50% of your protein be plant-based protein. And plant-based protein can be beans, can be different lentils, mushrooms, okay? And the grains is any grains. And then I anticipate your question. Every patient I ever gave this talk to, if the diabetic say, oh, but I can't have grain, I can't have pasta, I can't have bread. This is like, yeah, I can't have rice. Like it's driving my diabetes, driving my sugar out of control. Well, if you eat uh, mac and cheese for dinner, yes, you cannot have macaroni and cheese because your sugar will be out of control. But if you plan your plate where you have all of this, with fibers that actually slow down absorption of these grains, you can absolutely have your mac and cheese. It's just a portion control. Also, again, listen to your body. You should never feel hungry. When you feel hungry, it's actually telling you you're missing something. And we're gonna talk more about what this something means. But plates can be different and you are different. So somebody who is small, woman, uh, 120 pounds, like your plate, maybe eight inches. Somebody who is very big and muscular man, and especially into sport or into dancing, or like you're exercising a lot, then your plate, maybe 12 or even 16 inches plate, you choose, you see how your body reacts, you should be feeling full, you should be feel absolutely satisfied. So this is practical, excellent choices. So again, uh, here we go, your vegetables, your protein, your starch, or your grains, okay? One more, and this is what I told you. I put potatoes, all of the starchy vegetables actually in the category of the grains. Okay, beautiful plate here. Beautiful, very realistic plate. This is, what is this? This is pasta and meatballs, and then your fruits and your veggies, and again, uh, yums, substitution for your uh, greens. This is your starchy food. And again, beautiful plate, okay? This is again, for example, this plate. It kind of like in the first glance is look, okay, where is my greens? But this is actually quinoa and turkey breast meatballs. So we have greens, we have protein, so beautiful plate. Okay, I would add a little bit more color to this, but beautiful plates overall. A lot of people have problem with the rule of plate for breakfast. So we actually have a good idea how to fit it for lunch and dinner. But again, this is, this is examples where pumpkin seeds are also your protein group. And then you have your greens and your fruits and your veggies. Eggs are excellent source of protein for breakfast. Again, bell peppers, peaches, whole toast, grain. And again, if you balance it, if this is you have all of these groups, you don't have to worry about these grains, okay? Toast is acceptable, all food is acceptable. All food is valuable and phenomenal and good for you. It's all about proportions. And to me, this was revelation. Even I just came back from um, all-inclusive resort in Mexico when we go to buffet and before, Buffet was scary to me because I was always overeat. I was always like feel bad. But this time with this um, 
general rule, I would grab my one plate and I, oh, okay, shrimps look good. Okay, here's my protein group. Okay, I need my veggies. Let's, let's go to the veggie. I would pick up my veggies and I, I would place it on a plate. And then, okay, I have room, like I don't have fruits. Let me go get fruits. Oh, and my grains. What do I want for grains? And I would like, oh, okay, like this um, cinnamon roll look good. And okay, I can have it because I just balance it by all of the other wonderful food. So now, since you're already so smart, what is wrong with this plate and how would you fix it? This is actually like on a first glance, it looks like a beautiful plate. Well, this, this is not, this is clearly somebody trying to restrict themselves because it's a very small portion, <laughs> but, and, and not a beautiful plate to begin with. But those, these people were actually trying to serve a very healthy, meal, which end up being not so healthy. We have number one, veggies, and then the size of the protein, and especially in this plate, is too big. So protein occupies actually half of the plate, not quarter of the plate. And it's like all of those plates are missing grains or starches. So to this plate, uh, I would add some fruits and I would maybe add some rice or some quinoa or anything, or maybe even slice of bread, but carbs are missing here and fruits are missing from here. Same here. Okay, moving on. The next rule is the rule of the rainbow. And just having these two rules, you're going to be okay for the rest of your life. Uh, again, I want to remind you, sodium minerals and vitamins that our body cannot produce on its own and actually ha you have to consume it. And that's why it's very important to consume all of the colors. Why? Because of these things that we recently discovered and it's called phytochemicals. And it's any various biologically active compounds found in the plants. And we keep discovering them every month. There is a new, um, article published about, oh, we discovered this, it's fight cancer. We discovered this, it fights cardiovascular disease. So apparently plants are very good and we are trying to recreate it. And, you know, we discovered uh, resveratrol, which is um, something that contains the skin of the grapes. And now we say, oh, wine is good for you, okay? Because resveratrol is antioxidant, and then actually there are supplements with resveratrol. Guess what? They're not working. We are missing something so far. We cannot recreate anything that works as well as it works in the whole natural food. And when I'm talking about whole foods, I'm not talking about store whole foods. I'm talking about the food that nature created and it's in most unrefined form. Um, and we actually have this on our website and on our Instagram account and our Facebook account. So I'm not going to repeat myself. You can go read, but this is different compounds that we're able to so far discover and they divided by groups like each color uh, of um, the food group contains um, the certain uh, phytonutrients. And again, when I apply this plate, to myself and what I recommend to my patient is, so a rule of plate applied to every plate, but the rule of rainbow applied for every 24 hours. So if for breakfast I have carrots, I already had something orange, then for lunch I wanna have maybe my salad with some tomatoes. So I already had some uh, green and red, and then for dinner, I'm thinking, what have I not had? And, oh, I didn't have any purples or blues today. So let me maybe bake myself an eggplant and add some blueberries to this mix. And this is how you go day by day. So for rule of plate, every plate you serve should look like half of it is fruits and veggies, quarter of it is your protein, and quarter of this is your starch. And then for the day, did you eat every color every day? And all of this good, but we have something else. Um, every physician knows what I just told you. Every nurse, like everybody in every dietitian know this. And yet 
there is fat people among physicians. There is people with anorexia among healthcare workers. And we all know about this. So something is missing. So even if we want, if we know this information and we want to follow this, something is amiss. And this something is actually your mind. And I want you to introduce you to mindset of loving yourself. And just like, let it sing for a second. Loving yourself. So rule number one of loving yourself, my body is the best. And it doesn't mean narcissistic, I'm the best, look at me, I'm so beautiful, you all like below me. No, my body is the best, is the best for me, is for my mindset, even if I have extra pounds, or I don't have enough pounds, or I have not enough muscles, my body is the best for me in right moment, in right this moment. Your body is adaptable and incredible, and it's what is the best for you in this particular moment. Rule number two is I am made in the image of God. And this is from Wisdom of Solomon. God created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. And this kind of like it's interlaced with the first statement, my body is the best. Because my body is the best and your body is the best and your body is the best. And we actually are equal. We're all created in the image of God. So I have the same value and the same weight and the same importance as Queen Elizabeth, as the junkie I'm treating for overdose in the hospital, as the homeless person, as my neighbor. We, if we all created by God, we're all the same and we're all equal. And when you think about my body is the best for me right now, right at this moment, this anorexic person or this overweight person is actually having the best body for them. This body is actually trying to communicate something to them and it's the best body for them in this right moment. So I don't have a right to judge. You don't have a right to judge. Nobody has a right to judge. We're all equal. And then the next rule is my body is the only temple for my soul. So I always tell all of my patients, I'm a physician, I can help you, but it's your responsibility. You can change the house, you can change your clothes, you can change the country. I moved from another continent. I changed the continent. You cannot change your body. So far, we don't do uploads of our mind to iCloud. We don't do brain transplant. So this is all you have. You will have it for the rest of your life. You can't just trade it in. You can't exchange it. So your responsibility is to take care of your body. Nobody can do it for you. Your mom cannot do it for you. Your husband cannot do it for you. Your doctor cannot do it for you. And if you're not taking care of your body, then actually you cannot take care of anybody else. You get sick, you actually become responsibility to somebody else. So my body is the only temple for my soul, is your priority, is your responsibility. And if I am putting myself in the mindset, my body is the only temple for my soul, and this is my choice and my responsibility how to treat my body, then the next question I always ask myself, why am I eating? And people eat for a lot of reasons. Food is phenomenal, it's a life, it's drive. It, it's, it's everything. We connect food to everything. We get married, we celebrate with the food. Somebody dies, we go to the funeral, there is the food. Somebody has a birthday, there is the food. Baby is born, mama give the breast, it's, it's a food. Food is love, food is celebration, food is every emotion that you can think of is actually connected to the food. But when you treat your body as a temple for your soul, then if you ask yourself a question, what do I actually need? Am I hungry? If you're hungry, you must eat. But we eat when we're bored. Remember going to the movie. How many people can we stand popcorn in the movies? This is such a habit. We're in the movie, we eat popcorn. People eat when they're stressed. People don't eat when they're stressed. 
Some people have anorexia when they stress. People eat when they're tired, especially mothers, especially children. Mothers are actually exhausted, want to go to sleep, but they still have to clean. They still have to finish the job. They still have to put the child to bed. So let me get a little bit snack. Let me get a cup of coffee with the sugar. It will give me energy. Of course it will give. So I'm tired. Food is a supplement for the rest. But again, if I am treating my body as a temple for my soul, then why am I eating is a big question because actually maybe my body need a meditation or a shower or walk or 15 minutes power nap rather than the food. And the same goes, why are you not eating? Is it spiritual? Are you fasting because you are cleansing your spirit? Are you doing detox? Or are you not eating out of guilt? Because yesterday you went off the wagon and you completely were like, oh my God, I'm going to eat everything. And today I'm going to punish myself for going off the rails yesterday. And with everything you do to your body, if you are in the mindset of loving yourself, you should always ask yourself, is it beneficial to me? What is it giving me? Is it giving me energy? Is it giving me uh, some emotional relief? Why am I eating? And is it helpful to me? Is it beneficial to me? So this is kind of like my speech for today. Uh, you guys, if you want to unmute yourself and ask any questions, we have at least five minutes for the questions. Any questions? If you don't want to unmute yourself, you can send me a message in a chat. Anyone? Hello? Okay. Well, so um, if you guys found it interesting and you have a little bit more questions about psychology of um, eating and why are we actually um, eating when we're not hungry, we actually have a wonderful event planned. It's going to be on July 1st and Natalia is going to tell you a little bit more about it. Hello, everybody. Aksana, it's actually August 1st, not July 1st. I'm sorry, yes, August yeah. 1st. We already passed July 1st. Everybody, yeah, happy 4th of, 4th of July. Happy 4th of July, yes, everybody. So um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Natalia, and uh, we would like to invite you to our next uh, workshop that we're actually hosting in person this time, and it's going to be August 1st. It's going to be from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., so you will have five hours that will be dedicated to empower yourself on, on how to detox um, on a molecular level, a full body, mind, and soul detox on a molecular level. We will have um, powerful meditations. We'll have food meditation, uh, body movement meditations. Uh, of course, there will be food and there will be healthy, nurturing food. We will start the day with um, light breakfast with yogi tea, adaptogenic coffee, and our own powerful, what we call green goddess bowl, which is similar to acai bowl, but a little bit different nutrients. And you can guess our favorite color is green, powerful um, green goddess bowl. There will be lunch. We will share recipes for nurturing, um, detoxifying food. If you have your favorite recipes that you would like to share with the group of like-minded people, you're more than welcome to send it to us in advance, or you can just you know, bring it with you at the time of the event. Unfortunately, we're gonna limit the event just to 10 people. So if you would like to register, I'm gonna send, actually I see Mila already sent the link. Thank you so much. So there is a link to register. And um, if you register today, we, uh, we're giving you 10% of the total um, ticket and you can apply the discount. Um, it's, the code is July 5 to get 10% of discount today. So the code will be running until 
midnight today. And we will also have another uh, discount. If you bring a friend with you, they will have another 10% off of the total um, price. And again, uh, you can find the registration link on our website, or if or you can email us directly, or you can call us, let us know if you're coming. We would love to see you in person. We will be doing um, physical exercises, to, so make sure that you bring your yoga mat with you, wear comfortable clothes. We will use uh, kundalini uh, yoga um, breathing techniques and uh, special postures to detox body mind and soul we will uh, also share other uh, special technique uh, for the whole body and mind uh, detox process so let us know i have two questions do you mind if i pinch in and answer the questions Yes, do we have questions? Of yes. course. Okay, we have the first question. Do you recommend intermittent fasting? So this is all goes back to the slide about why are we doing this? And personally, I do intermittent fasting. Every Monday I fast. I don't need anything for 36 hours. And I do it for uh, medicinal reasons. I was fascinated by the research that came in 2016 and actually won a Nobel Prize. Uh, about treating cancer with intermittent fasting. And personally, I already do it for three years, every Monday, except when I'm on vacation. So I fast approximately maybe 49 Mondays per year. Again, I don't recommend anybody to start from the 36 hours. You have to have a right mindset. If you're doing this because... I'm not happy with my body and you're thinking I'm going to lose weight this way, or if tomorrow you're going to binge eating, then I don't absolutely recommend this. I also don't recommend it if you have a diabetes. This is a recipe for disaster. You have, you can do it. You have to do it in the supervision of your physician. I also don't recommend just going straight 36 hours. There is multiple version. It's 16, 18, and you should start with something 16, 18, if you want to then increase the time, then this is okay. But intermittent fasting, 16, 18 is actually my favorite one. I do think everybody have to have at least 12 hours break in between eating. This is when your body can actually restore all the enzymes. So at least 12 hours <clears throat> fast per 24 hours, I absolutely recommend it to everybody. Higher than this, and again, intermittent fasting is actually, if you think back, it's in every religion. Every religion has a fast or Lent for religious region. And people were doing it for multiple, multiple uh, generations and years. And I think it's physiological to our body. Also remember from all religious lands, pregnant women, children, and elderly people are always excluded. So I do not recommend intermittent fasting for that category of the people. And then beyond this, it's <clears throat> always listen to your body. This is your body. Whatever works for 90% of the people might not work for you. Um, the next question was, if you feel like you have a patience to come to emotional eating, what steps do you take to increase mindfulness around eating? Oh, so this is this is my favorite one. Uh, so I do come, I, we do a lot of things because people are different and different things work for different people. So one of my favorite ones, because I am emotional eater. When I'm stressed, I am a disaster. I, I can't be around food. So one of the things, like my favorite one is, <clears throat> Number one is serve beautifully. So get beautiful plate, put a fork and knife and beautiful linen and put the candle and get in the mood. One of our problem is in our society, we're so in a rush that sometimes we consume food without even eating. And our uh, digestion actually starts in the mouth and all of the enzymes and preparation are getting ready while you're cooking, while you're actually 
even hunting the mammoths and, and then you frying them out so like grilling the mammoths and if you skip like if you just drive to mcdonald's and then you're talking on the phone and then like you're eating uh that's become a problem and if you're eating because you're emotional one of the thing is switch emotions light the candles one of my favorite trick i love queen elizabeth so when I'm feeling I'm not myself and I need to be grounded, I imagine that I'm sitting with the Queen Elizabeth at the table and I have my um, knife and my fork and, and, I, and I serve myself like on a beautiful plate and I light the candle and I get into the mood that if I was in a Buckingham Palace, I would not stuff my face like a crazy person. So I, it's kind of almost like a meditation when you put yourself like in this mood. The other thing I absolutely do love food meditation and then just mindfulness. Why are you emotional? Uh, I always recommend you have to live this emotion. So just sit with yourself and instead of absolutely mindedly consuming this stuff, sit with yourself and journal. What am I feeling? Why am I feeling this? what can be done uh, to substitute eating. One of my personal example, we have movie night on Sunday with kiddos and it's always popcorn and fruits and, and I try not to eat after 6 p.m. but the movie night is 8 p.m. and I found myself I'm bored. I actually went and did like five push-ups in front of everybody. And my husband goes, what was this? I was like, this was instead of eating my popcorn. <laughs> and it worked. Like it took my mind off the, like, off the boredom. And I was like, hey, watching the movie. And I'm actually proud of myself that I control my urge to eat out of boredom. Okay, any more questions? We actually will, we do have a lot of this emotional eating in our... Um, um, event that we're hosting July, August. This is more um, uh, about how to control your mind. Do you think you can become addicted to sugar? Oh, absolutely. I don't even think about this. I know 100%. There's multiple, multiple studies about this. There were the rats that actually were offered cocaine and sugar, and sugar is 10 times more addictive than cocaine. So you can absolutely, 100%, got it, can and will get addicted to sugar. Different people are, have different level of addictiveness. And even for stuff as such as heroin or morphine, if you follow 100,000 people that post hospitalization had a prescription to morphine, not all of them became addicted. But you, if you are prone to addiction, sugar is more addictive than